Lightsaber combat isn't just a means of self-defense. It's a reflection of Jedi traditions and a testament to one's connection with the Force. You see, in the Star Wars universe, there's not just one way to swing a lightsaber. There are seven distinct lightsaber combat forms, each with its own unique style and purpose. When Luke Skywalker first laid eyes on his father's lightsaber, he was captivated by its elegance and power. As Obi-Wan Kenobi explained, it's an elegant weapon for a more civilized time. Little did Luke know that this was just the tip of the lightsaber iceberg. Welcome to Star Wars Deconstructed, students of the Force and acolytes of the galaxy. Whether you're Jedi, Sith, or somewhere in between, join us today as we take you on a journey through the seven lightsaber combat forms, revealing their hidden significance and why they are far more important than you might have ever imagined. Form 1, Shi Cho. Shi Cho is often considered the oldest and most basic form, making it the starting point for nearly every Jedi's lightsaber training. When all else fails, Jedi often revert to Shi Cho as a last resort. Even in desperate situations, like during the execution of Order 66, you'll notice many Jedi falling back on Shi Cho. Now, you might think that the simplicity of Shi Cho means it's unsophisticated, but that's not correct. In fact, this form can appear quite brutal and aggressive because it involves a rapid flurry of strikes. It's all about overwhelming your opponent with relentless attacks. The key to mastering Shi Cho is achieving inner peace. When a Jedi attains this state of calm, they can use their lightsaber as an extension of themselves. It's not about brute force, it's about becoming one with the weapon. This makes Shi Cho a formidable and effective combat form. Interestingly, while Sith may initially learn Shi Cho, they often abandon it in favor of more aggressive forms, emphasizing their preference for power and dominance over the peaceful harmony sought by the Jedi. So Shi Cho may be basic, but holds a deeper significance in the world of lightsaber combat. Form 2, Makashi. This form was developed as lightsabers became more common among both the Jedi and the Sith, reflecting a shift from the older, more aggressive styles. Makashi is all about being a skilled duelist. It's not about brute strength or overpowering your opponent. It's about finesse and control. This form is tailored for one-on-one -on -one duels, focusing on getting the upper hand through careful and measured strikes. It's essentially the elegant dance of lightsabers, with practitioners aiming to outmaneuver and outwit their opponents. What's interesting about Makashi is its adaptability. It's designed to accommodate various lightsaber designs, such as the crossguard lightsaber seen during the Hundred Years of Darkness, or even the use of a second Shoto blade alongside the primary lightsaber. This flexibility makes it a preferred choice for those who appreciate versatility in combat. Makashi did fall out of fashion for a time when the Sith were believed to be extinct, but a few Jedi, like Kiyadi Mundi, continued to practice it. One of the notable masters of Makashi was Count Dooku, who was immensely proud of his reputation as a fearsome duelist. In fact, that pride might have been one of the factors that led Dooku down the path to the dark side. So, Makashi is not just about technique, it's also a reflection of the character and philosophy of the one wielding the blade. Form 3, Sorsu. This lightsaber combat style emerged in response to the rising prevalence of blasters across the galaxy. It's often said that necessity is the mother of invention, and Sorsu is the embodiment of that idea. One of the remarkable aspects of Sorsu is its focus on defense, making it the go-to style for deflecting blaster bolts using lightsabers. If you've ever praised the Jedi's ability to effortlessly battle away incoming laser fire, you have Form 3 to thank for that. By the time of the Star Wars prequel trilogy, Sorsu had become a fundamental aspect of the Jedi training. Every Jedi, young Padawans included, honed their skills in this form. Luke Skywalker himself highlighted the importance of this discipline in the in-universe guidebook, Secrets of the Jedi. He pointed out that the primary focus for Padawans was defense. They would even practice blocking laser blasts while wearing special helmets that obscured their sight. This practice was more than just skill development, it was a way to teach them to let the Force be their guide. Sorsu isn't just about shielding oneself from physical threats, it's about mastering the art of self-preservation and patience. Jedi, like Obi-Wan Kenobi, were renowned for their expertise in Sorsu, using it to fend off relentless adversaries. In the era of the Galactic Empire, Canon Jarrus demonstrated his proficiency in this form, showcasing its timeless relevance in the ever-evolving world of lightsaber combat. Form 4, Ataru. Ataru pushes the boundaries of lightsaber combat, and it's not for the faint of heart. This form heavily relies on force-assisted acrobatics, making it a favorite among the Jedi who excel in wielding the force. Ataru shines in one-on-one -on -one duels, where practitioners seek to bring the fight to a swift and spectacular conclusion. It often involves performing gravity-defying maneuvers, bouncing off walls, and launching sweeping, rapid strikes that appear to come from all directions. It's like a whirlwind of energy forcing an opponent to constantly play defense, trying to keep up with the blinding speed and agility of the Ataru Master. 
One iconic use of Ataru was by none other than Yoda himself in this epic duel with Count Dooku in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. Watching Yoda's acrobatic prowess in that battle was nothing short of breathtaking. However, there's a dark side to Ataru, and we're not talking about the Sith. This form's extreme aggressiveness and allure of its power have made many of its masters susceptible to the seduction of the dark side. This accounts for Form 4's popularity among those who fall into the temptations of the Sith. Form 5, Shen and Diem So. Form 5 was conceived by Jedi, who practiced Form 3 but felt the need for a more aggressive approach in combat. Shen, the first part of Form 5, is tailored for long-range engagements. It enables practitioners to deflect and swat back blaster bolts with precision, making it an effective choice for Jedi facing a barrage of blaster fire. This form capitalizes on distance and control, allowing a Jedi to remain in command of the battlefield. On the other hand, Jem So, the second aspect of Form 5, is all about blade-on-blade -blade combat. What makes Jem So distinct is its unconventional reverse grip, which adds a unique dynamic to lightsaber duels. Ahsoka Tano, a prominent Jedi, favored Jem So, showcasing her prowess in adapting to different combat styles. What sets Form 5 apart is its incorporation of Form 3's strengths, including solid blocks, precise parries, powerful counterattacks, and reposts. It's a versatile and well-rounded approach to lightsaber combat, combining both defense and offense. Anakin Skywalker, who we all know as Darth Vader, had a particular affinity for Form 5. Its adaptability made it his favorite, as it suited his aggressive and headstrong personality. However, his choice didn't sit well with many Jedi, who believed that Shan and Dem So ventured perilously close to using the Force for offense rather than its traditional role in defense. So Form 5 carries a debate about its compatibility with the Jedi Way, highlighting the complexities of lightsaber combat in the Star Wars universe. Form 6, Niman. Niman represents a kind of culmination of lightsaber combat techniques, bringing together various elements from the previous forms. What sets Niman apart is his emphasis on balance, both in lightsaber combat and in the Force. Those who developed Niman sought to triumph without dominating their opponents. They aimed to defend themselves, deliver justice, and maintain harmony without being tempted by the lure of power. This form embodies the Jedi philosophy of seeking peaceful resolution and understanding before resorting to violence. Surprisingly, Darth Maul, the menacing Sith apprentice of Darth Sidious, relied on Niman in Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. This suggests that his master deliberately subverted the Jedi's favored combat style. It's a testament to the adaptability of Niman as a form that even Sith could find utility in its teachings. Niman practitioners often blend lightsaber combat with the use of the Force itself, which aligns with the Jedi's broader approach of balancing combat with their spiritual connection to the Force. This makes Niman appealing to those Jedi who are not particularly enthusiastic about the art of combat, but still seek to uphold the principles of the Jedi Order. In essence, Form 6, Niman, encapsulates the idea of using the Force as a tool for peace and harmony while being prepared for conflict when it cannot be avoided. Form 7, Juyo or Vapad. This form is the most controversial and enigmatic of them all, with a history that spans millennia, well before the Skywalker era. What makes Juyo so distinct is that it encourages Jedi to embrace their emotions and utilize them as a source of relentless power. In a way, it's the only form that actually endorses drawing from one's emotions. This unique characteristic set it apart from all other forms, but it also led to the outright ban of Juyo by the Jedi Order for an extended period. However, there was one Jedi who dared to delve into the depths of Juyo. Jedi Master Mace Windu took it upon himself to refine and shape Juyo in an offshoot known as Vapad. This is a way to control his inner darkness and channel it into worthy goals. Windu developed Vapad to harness the power of his emotions without being consumed by them. Despite his mastery, Master Windu was cautious about teaching Vapad to others. He recognized that its immense power came with great risks. If a Jedi failed to master it as he had, they could easily fall prey to their emotions, becoming servants to the dark side rather than masters of it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, and why not watch the next video?